Hi, so in this video, I just want to look at a new feature that we've released called Custom Race Cars, where you can get access to our entire database of ratings. So jumping over to the screen, uh, you can see here that I'm logged in and I am a premium access user. This is really important because this function is only available if you're premium access. You can't get this on a pay as you go due to the nature of the tool. Um, when you have this, you'll see custom race cards here. I'm going to start by coming in here and you can see I've got a couple of tests in this account already and one is set to default and one is set to display. I'll come to those in a minute. The first thing we're going to want to do is to add a new race card. When you add a new race card, the very first thing is you want to name your race card. So this might be a uh, speed focused or sprint speed focused or whatever you may want to use this particular race card for analyzing if it's a speciality or it could be more general. You can put a description underneath that is completely optional. And if you want to change the icon, then you can click on this and you can choose a different icon to put next to the card. Underneath here, we then have the ratings and the race advisor has a vast library of horse racing ratings. And you'll see that we've got filters to kind of help you through them. And as you can see here, there is a huge amount of ratings. And we'll talk a bit more about those in just a second. Now, the rating filters have raw, rank, diff, TP and other. Um, the raw rating is the original rating, the original score for the rating. So let's just take a speed figure as an example. It might be 50. That's the raw rating. That's the number the horse has achieved for that rating. The rank is where that horse comes in the field. Is it the best, i.e. rank one? Is it the second best, i.e. rank two? Third best, rank three? Fourth best, rank four, etc. So this tells you where the horse sits compared to the other runners in the race for its rank for that particular rating. Diff TP stands for difference from top. So this tells you how many points difference between the horse you're looking at rating and the best rated horse in the race. So if the best rated horse in the race had a speed figure of 100 and our horse has a speed figure of 70, our horse is 30 points difference from the top rated horse because it's 30 points away from the 100 rating that the top rated horse has got. So this again tells you a little bit of context around how far away from uh, a horse in points your horse may be. And other, some ratings don't fit into these categories. They may be text based. They may tell you if a horse is moving up or down. For example, money class shift is up or down. And so these ones come into the others. So clicking on any of these will remove uh, all the ratings and filter them just by those ones that you have selected. And you can see here as well, all when we click rank, you'll see that they are all ranking versions. When we click difference from the top, they're all diff from top diff tp versions and other you can see there are just a few here that don't meet that criteria and clicking on it again removes that filter we also have the rating group so we can filter by groups and all of our ratings are grouped into either class connections form or speed and then again there are a handful that don't fit into either of these four categories and they go into other so if you're specifically looking for class-based ratings, we can sit class and maybe we want the ranks. And now we have class only ratings broken down by rank and we can choose these. And again, we can just set it back to the default if we want to. Now, if you know the rating that you want, you can simply type it in here and it will come up. And you can also type in text for the description as well. And it will search by title name of the rating or text. The little I just shows you what some of our um, acronyms mean because acronyms uh, are always quite confusing. So this shows you what some of those acronyms are uh, if you need a memory or, or a reminder of what they may be. Now, once you've filtered the ratings or you can scroll through, the first thing you may ask is, what does this mean? What on earth is ACPFP CLTD? Well, first of all, we can see here that CL is class. TD is time decay, okay? But we still want more details. So if I click anywhere in this box, here we go, we get a little pop-up that tells us what this rating is. It tells us 
that this rating, first of all, high is best and low is worst. It goes from high to low. It is the average competitive PFP rating class level, and it's got a time decay function on it. Time decay means that we give more importance to recent races and less importance to races that happened a long time ago. And then we may go, well, what is the PFP? Good question. I click on the box to remove that. And now I'm just going to search for PFP and come to the top and I'm just going to find the PFP. And if I click on this again, we can see it's a high to low rating. The best horse will be higher rated, the worst horse lower rated. And it's the current form class level of the horse. And it starts at 1500 in terms of the score. So we can get the details of the rating like this. And when we find one we want, we can add it down. And underneath here, we have a preview of the race card. And you can see now the PFP has been added. We're not going to see any ratings here. This just shows you what the layout of your race card looks like. So I'm just going to add a handful of, well, let me remove the filter. I'm just going to add a handful of ratings. And you'll see that we populate the race card down below with these ratings. There is a limit on the amount of ratings you can put in. It's 15. Um, past that, it becomes unusable on a race card. Now, we may want our ratings in a specific order. So to change the order, we click on a rating heading in our preview and just simply drag where we want it. So maybe we want this down here and we want the speed up here. And so we can move them around like this. If we decide we've selected a rating that we don't want anymore, we can simply hit on the little X on the top right and that rating goes. So we can play around with the ratings like this. Now to save your race card, you need to hit the save a race card button. If you just close out, it won't save. So we save that race card, we get confirmation. And now we can see we've got our sprint focus race card at the top. Currently it is set to display. So let's look at what these fields mean. Obviously the name is the name of the race card that we named it. Default determines if we have the race card set to default. So now looking at the fields here, what we have is we have the name of the race card and that's what we named it originally, of course. And then we have whether the race card is default. And when you go to view custom race cards, you can choose one of them to be default. And that is the one that's always going to show when you first open the custom race cards on a race. At the moment, I have it as this test three here, but I can click on the three dots and set it to default and it will flip over to this one. So that's the one that will always open now as default. You can choose up to five race cards to display on your custom race card menu at any one time. And at the moment I have two of them selected. If I don't want to display this one, I can toggle it off and I can toggle this one back on. And that means that this will be viewable from my custom race cards menu when I'm viewing a race. If you have a display off, that means that it is no longer viewable. Description will be where I've added a description on my race card if I have added one. And then we can see some information about that race card, how many fields we've got, so how many ratings are on it, when it was created and when it was last used. If we want to edit it, we come to the three dots and click edit and it opens it up and then we can edit, for example, and add another rating. and then save that race card. And there we go, that appears there. So that's how we create our race cards. Now to use the race cards, we need to come to a race. So let's just open the first race of the day. And here we see the standard race card. What you'll see now is we've positioned all of the menu items along the top here. And the last one is now custom race card. And when we click on that, you'll see by default we open our default race card. And you can see now that we've got all the data populating for the various factors here uh, that we put onto that race card. And if we want to change it to another custom one, one of the five that we've chosen here, we can click on that one and our page reloads with the ratings from that race card. Again, we can quickly switch from here. And if we want to switch back over to the standard or the default card, we can click on race card there very easily and put it up. So that's how you use 
custom race cards. Again, you have to be a premium access member to use them because they require a bit more long-term use. Um, uh, but if you've got any questions about how to use the custom race cards or the ratings on them, please don't hesitate to drop a comment or contact our support team. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.